This is a JD Square manual tubing bender. This is a mandrel die, follower, keeper, and then you have this ratcheting system that's basically a cam and this bar that has these like varying teeth that lock in at different positions and then you know you ratchet it to bend. The reason why I like this bender over a hydraulic setup, and I've had hydraulic benders, I've had a fully hydro, uh, electric over hydraulic 105 and I've had a pneumatic cylinder for one of these, is the feel that you get from this bender. This bender bends about 10 degrees at a time. Every time that you make a pull on it, it relieves pressure and you've got your spring back. You catch another tooth, you bend it again. So in this die here, there's like multiple positions that this pin pops through. And to get to different angles on this degree wheel, you would go to like a full point and then, and then move back. In a hydraulic setup, this bar moves from here to here in one swoop. With this particular bender, it doesn't go nearly as far, and to get to like that same length, you would pull multiple pins, and it has all of those different positions to spring back in. So if I'm going to bend like a 90 degree angle, it's going to have like 15 positions in that span to spring back within. And whenever I'm done with that piece of tubing, it's going to have less um, like stored energy in that bend. So where that really comes into affecting what you're doing, I typically go into a build, I have an understanding of what I'm going to do, but I have no clue um, what my exact measurements are or, or what I, it's not like I've built it in CAD or like a Bentec Pro or anything like that and then I'm working off like a data sheet to give me my bends. I'm doing it all by feel and by look and I bend one side and I get it how I want it and then I mirror that image. And so for doing things that way, a manual bender gives me more precise bends. With this spring back design and by it being able to go, uh, probably the most important part, let me try to explain this. So, this is all numbered. I go one, two, three, four, all the way to 10 here, and I number these pins. Whenever I go in to do a bend, let's say I just bent this, I've done the first pin and I'm on like the seventh rung, but maybe I need two more degrees. I'll pull that a quarter or a half or three quarters of the next pull, so I'll go eight and a half. That is way more precise than this degree wheel is. I don't care how exact you get this little piece of, of TIG wire over here on the degree wheel. With a hydraulic bender and the amount of spring back that it has and the varying amounts of spring back based on how you do the pulls, whether they're identical, where you use the full stroke on each one or you don't cheat and like get halfway to here and then go ahead and reset it and go, go to the next pull. All of those things cause variations in the tubing that don't allow repeatability in the same way that this bender does. This bender works for me in the way that I work. I have done it the other way and I did not like the precision that I was able to get with that. I am way more precise with this and I'm actually faster with this. The air over hydraulic bender um, is not a quick way to do things. This is easily just as fast, if not faster, and a fully hydraulic bender I will say is faster. But to be completely honest, I overshot a lot of bins using that stupid thing. We were all the time getting the cheater pipe on the backside trying to pull like three degrees out of it because you would get to a point and then you would do it and it's and it's a rotary. So like most of those, like once the motor spins up, like it falls on the RPM when you turn it off. And, and so you're like rear, rear, and it, and it would just go too far. And then you'd have to freaking pull some, some bin back out of it. I did not like that. This right here, and you can really feather that thing. You can get on it where there's like spring back and you can literally just pump it and pull that spring back out of it. If you're having an issue where the degree die is just like in between degrees, you can get a half a degree out of that with this. You cannot do that with a fully hydraulic bender. You can do that with an air over hydraulic bender, but man, you gotta be really precise. And that spring back may not show up when you first grab the piece, but as it sits and, and changes temperatures, maybe overnight or when you go to weld, 
I noticed it a lot with cages, you would have a lot more deflection whenever you went to do your full, full weld out. So a manual bender, it is more work, but in my opinion, you get a better product out of it.